Stick around because today we're going to talk about creating distinct voices for your characters. What's up guys? My name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. One of my subscribers requested a video on the subject of creating distinct character voices for dialogue. And we're going to talk about this today. The issue that my subscriber was having was that he said that all his characters sounded alike. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about how to shape your character voices. I'm going to have three different categories that explain how to build a character voice. And then later on in the video, I have some advanced techniques. It's just going to be very brief, but a a few advanced techniques that you can bring into your stories to vary up those voices. But first, let's talk about shaping your character voices. And I have three categories for you here. The first one is going to be character history, then we're going to talk about daily lives, and then finally we're going to talk about character traits. We'll start with the first one, character history, and I broke this down into a few different things. Uh, the first thing to keep in mind with this is personality. And typically you're going to have to ask yourself, okay, is my character extroverted or introverted? Usually extroverts will have more to say, they'll be more talkative, whereas introverts typically are more reserved, so they're going to speak less, so you might have like shorter sentences and things like that. Another thing to keep in mind with character history is childhood upbringing. Was your character raised among siblings? Did your character look up to a parent as a role model for speaking? And then another thing to keep in mind with upbringing is environment and culture. What kind of things were they allowed to say growing up? Were certain things encouraged? Were others discouraged? Was it okay for your character to make jokes as a kid, or were they told, yeah, have to be sincere around other people, things like that. Another thing to keep in mind with character history is their age. When did they grow up? What kind of phrases and slang were popular back then? For instance, nowadays when a soldier comes back from war, they might have PTSD. But decades ago when a soldier came back from war, they might be shell-shocked. Another thing with character history is education, both formal and informal. A character who has a master's degree is probably going to speak differently from a character who dropped out of high school. Another thing to keep in mind is informal education. A character may not have any fancy degrees, but maybe they read a lot of books, or they hang out with smart people, or they find themselves in situations where they learn a lot about the world and they learn a lot of facts that they can talk about when they're speaking. Now let's move on to the second category, daily lives. And this involves things like your character's career, hobbies, interests, as well as their attitude and their perception. Now with the first three I mentioned, career, hobbies, and interests, these will often determine jargon that a character will use. And when we talk about jargon, we're talking about special words or expressions that are used by members of a particular group. And oftentimes these special words and expressions are difficult for outsiders to understand. So if you have a character who's a doctor, they might use fancy scientific language every now and then. If you have a character who's a lawyer, they might use legal jargon. If you have a character who's a basketball fan, they might describe something easy as being like a layup. Now when it comes to attitude, this is usually the character's positive or negative outlook on life. If you have two characters, one is negative, the other is positive, they're both getting ready to go to work for the day, the negative character might say something like, oh, work's gonna suck today. But the positive character might say something like, oh, I hope we're busy so that the workday flies by. And the last part of this category is perception. And this involves the five senses, especially seeing, hearing, and feeling. And I was reading an article recently that explained that People favor one of their five senses over the others, and whichever sense they favor tends to trickle into their language from time to time. So for example, someone who favors sight might say something like, I don't like the looks of this, while somebody who favors hearing might say, I don't like the sound of this, and then somebody who favors feeling might say, this doesn't feel right. So keep this in mind, and this is more of like an advanced technique, but you can incorporate a person's perception into their language when it comes to sight, hearing, and feeling. Now my third category involves character traits. And there are a lot of different traits out there that influence how your characters will speak and what kind of language they will use. I have a few examples for you here. For instance, decisiveness is a trait. And a, a character who's decisive might say something like, here's what's going to happen. We're going to watch Brandon's new video as soon as it's uploaded. A character who's indecisive might say, maybe we can watch the new video if we have time. Another trait is formality. If a character is very formal, they might say something like, if everyone would please follow me outside, we can continue the tour. An informal character, however, might say something like, come on, let's get rolling. Another trait would be intelligence. Intelligent people are more likely to use bigger, more impressive words, as opposed to less educated people who will use basic word choice while they're speaking. The next trait would be how friendly a character is. If you have a character who's very friendly, they might greet you with a hi there, whereas a character who's more gruff might say something like, sup dude. And then the last one would be the trait of whether a character is literal or metaphorical in their speech. For instance, one person might 
step outside on a winter day and say, it's chilly out here, just the literal thing that's going on out there. Whereas another character who's more metaphorical in their language might say, it's as cold as my ex-wife's heart or something like that. And then of course, there are plenty of other traits out there that will determine how your characters speak. These were just some basic examples that you can work with. All right, now before I wrap up this video, I have three advanced techniques that I wanna share with you that'll help you make your characters' voices more distinct. They're easy to use. I call them advanced because they just don't get talked about enough, but they're very simple. The first one is to give your hero and villain opposite styles of dialogue. This can be very effective and it can help you highlight the differences between the characters. A great example of this comes from the movie Die Hard where you have John McClane who's a New York cop. He's a blue collar guy. He speaks in a lot of short direct statements, uses a lot of offensive language. And the villain in this story is Hans Gruber who's this European guy. He's educated. He has a theatrical flair to his language. He speaks very different from John McClane and the way that these two characters speak highlights how they clash as people. Another great example of this would be Batman and the Joker. In most cases, Batman is portrayed as being quiet. His dialogue is very subdued, whereas the Joker is very wild and over the top with his dialogue. He never shuts up. So keep this in mind. If you do have a hero and a villain, ask yourself, can I make their dialogue styles opposite in order to highlight their differences. The second technique is power dynamics. This involves the question of who controls the conversation. Whenever characters are talking to one another, someone has more power than the other or than the rest. And whenever you do have a character who's giving commands, that usually signals that they're in power. However, the character receiving those commands can ignore those commands and that could be a shift in power. Another thing to keep in mind with this is that usually the person who speaks more has the power. That's because they're often giving instructions or they're pushing forth their ideas or their worldview. However, sometimes the opposite is true. Sometimes the character who speaks more is actually the weaker person, especially when they're begging for something or they're complaining to someone. And then the last thing I wanna share with you is creating different dialogue styles for different situations. We already talked about how you wanna distinguish one character's voice from another. But for each of your main characters, they should have different dialogue styles when they're at home, when they're at work, and when they're at play. Because let's face it, when we're around our friends, we speak differently than when we're around our family or our coworkers or our boss or whoever it may be. So when you do come up with your major characters, ask yourself, okay, how do they speak differently in different situations? So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what's your favorite example of a hero and villain who have opposite dialogue styles? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he cannot put it down until he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.